so <coughs> by default all variables defined in a function they are local to that function so every function has its own memory space so whatever identifiers you define within a function they are not visible outside that function so the first implication is you can make use of the identifier names in two different functions without any conflict and more importantly even the parameters the function parameters not just the function uh, not just the identifiers defined in the function the identifiers which are listed as parameters or arguments to the function they are also local to the function space because the values are passed normally the values are passed by value the arguments are passed by value so uh, the variable that you have identifier that you have in the column calling function calling program may be different from the variable that you actually use within a function so the identifiers within a function they are they have a scope and life limited to the life of the function itself currency of the function and we can modify the behavior of these uh, uh, identifiers automatic is uh, auto keep by prefixing them with uh, specific uh, uh, keywords so auto or automatic variable they are the default types they are created automatically whenever the function is called and they are killed as soon as the function returns control back to the calling function so their life is uh, limited to uh, one function call in contrast if we define an identifier with static keyword static i mean for example if i declare an identifier like static int x initialize it to 0 then this value 0 will be used only for the first instance of that calling function when the function is called for the first time the identifier x will be initialized to 0 subsequent calls will remember whatever the identifier had in its location whatever the contents were there in that location of x that content that value will be remembered and that can be used in that subsequent call right so that is a static definition so the contents of the variable they are static across function calls so then the life becomes the life of the entire program not the life of just that function right so the identifier is alive although it is not recognizable outside the function but the identifier the storage remains alive as long as the program remains alive and then the scope scope we have already discussed uh, within an identifier which is defined within a matching pair of braces it is uh, recognized only in that range outside that range it is not defined so again you can reuse those identifiers as and when required right and <clears throat> when we use extern identifier declaration so this extern identifier declaration it can be used for uh, identifiers which are defined in some other files so those are external identifiers right so that those issues uh, will be resolved at the time of linker right? at the time of linking stage when different object files of different uh, source code they are compiled together to form one executable so those extern identifier extern uh, uh, qualifier identifiers they would be resolved at the time of linking of the code so that facilitates recognition of identifiers in multiple different source files if an identifier is defined in another file i mean for example if it is 
some namespace and then even if it is a global identifier that but that is defined in some other file and uh, you are compiling you are trying to use that identifier in a different uh, function which is uh, uh, stored in a different file then obviously you need to declare you need to tell the compiler that this identifier has been declared has been uh, declared in some other file that will be resolved at the time of linkage when the linker links up different object files of from the different source code yep and then <clears throat> other way to pass parameters is by reference wherein we pass not the value of that is contained in the identifier but the address of the memory location itself so this has the advantage that the value can be changed the actual uh, location the contents of the location itself can be changed if required but if we do not wish or we do not uh, wish to take chance that the contents of a location should be modified even if inadvertently then there is a possibility you can and that's a good programming habit good programming practice prefix that reference argument with a const qualifier const qualifier indicates that this is to be treated as a constant right it can only be accessed as a read only memory read only storage nothing can be overwritten on that storage right without const keyword it is open access I and mean, you can as read as well as write to that location if the argument is passed as reference we will see the syntax how the arguments are passed by reference and how the arguments are passed by value default is of course value that we have already seen and then the default arguments the functions can have if we do not pass any arguments then the functions can have some default arguments to work uh, on its own right the function is called and then it can start working on its uh, default arguments so <clears throat> these are defined in the function prototype itself when the function is defined some values i mean the argument at the time of declaring argument we define some values initialize it at that time so that if no argument is passed then the function will be called with these default values of the arguments right so that is also possible and when the default argument is to be used then the arguments need not be passed during the function call so for example in that uh, example of uh, adding two integers add x y if i had defined if i had defined right so this is the declaration prototype declaration now if i call this function just add now it is possible to call this function without any arguments at all right so this parentheses are of course required to indicate that this is a function but when i call this function it will be called with x being equal to 0 y as being equal to 1 and the return value would be x plus y that is equal to 1 right so that is uh, what we mean by default arguments of a function so the function arguments can be omitted in a function call if they are default arguments are to be used the compiler rewrites the function call and automatically inserts the default values of the argument and then we can also have an inline qualifier 
right this was not there in original uh, c language standard it has uh, become a part of language standard only since 1999 in this case and because of this uh, the macro use of macro preprocessor macros has uh, uh, reduced to a great extent what is the effect of this qualifier inline qualifier see whenever you call a function there are certain overheads involved right calling a function and returning control back to the function master function some arguments have to be passed some data has to be transferred and then some other uh, output also needs to be transferred return values so that is an additional work this is not really uh, required for the solution of the problem per se this is only because of the design of the uh, solution you have designed your solution in such a way that a problem to be solved requires certain number of steps and those certain number of steps require function calls right now if the function is simple enough i mean it is still good idea to write a function i mean every single action encapsulated in a different function but if the function is simple enough then we can prefix it with this qualifier inline and that gives instruction to the compiler that the code of this function should be expanded at the place where the function is being called right so then it would be at the time of compilation it would be compiled as if there was no function call it would be just one program that is being compiled straight away but for a user perspective from the user perspective you are still solving the problem using functional decomposition you are writing different functions but from the execution point of view you are reducing the overheads associated with function calls and that can sometimes have significant improvement in the execution time of the code so <clears throat> qualifier in line before a functions return type in definition and obviously that should uh, precede the function call only then it would be able to compiler would be able to replace the function call with the actual uh, code of the function and it generates a copy of the code in place to avoid the explicit call to the function during execution now several things interesting things can be done earlier programming uh, days it was recursion was not allowed for example a function could not call itself right but many a times your problem is such that recursion is the most obvious thing to do it makes logic very simple it's not that it is not possible to solve the problem in any other way but if the function calls itself its logic becomes much more obvious one simple example being computation of the factorial factorial of a number how do you compute a factorial let's say i have a function called factorial with argument of int x right i would return the value as x multiplied by factorial x minus 1 and this will keep on happening until x is equal to 1 that is the termination clause right if x is equal to 1 then it stops there is no further function call return type is different right so this example also tells you how do we make use of x the previous function value 
static variable is used here right we need to retain what was the content of the value earlier and then we need to compute uh, <coughs> the subsequent values so that makes logic very simple and the program program code becomes very very elegant to look at so functions can call themselves and that is what we call as recursion but it cannot be infinitely possible so every recursion you need to take care that there is a termination clause value termination clause at which point the recursion stops otherwise it's like uh, getting into endless loop the function keeps on calling itself and it will never terminate so there has to be a termination clause definite termination clause which will bring the end of program in each call the problem is divided into a simpler problem to the point where no further simplification is possible that is what we call as the base case or the termination clause if the function is called with a base case the function simply returns a result for example if i call factorial 1 it would return factorial 1 so oh so i have this factorial example here just have a look at it so this is i am using here a uh, global uh, variable here and this is external it is an external code somewhere defined somewhere in some other file maybe so global x now what is the need for float identifier here factorial integer it is a long return type so that is an integer type so why do i need a float type variable any ideas while calculating factorials factorials are of course to be calculated only for integers positive integers so why do i need a float identifier for storing multiplication of integers the reason is the range of numbers integers are a very very small range float type variables they have a very broad range we have range ranging from 10 raised to the power minus uh, 39 to 10 raised to the power plus 38 right so large numbers can be very small as well as very large numbers can be accommodated in float integers we do not have that luxury and the problem with factorial is the size of the number can grow very quickly it's an exponential and very soon you would exhaust the range of integers you might be doing everything correct but you would exhaust the range of integers and what happens when you exhaust the range of integers the result is wrapped around so you may actually get into a situation where you are trying to find factorial of a large integer and the result is smaller than that integer by virtue of that wrap around right and that is why you need to store the result as a float type variable float type identifier just to accommodate large magnitude of numbers that may crop up during the computation of factorials so all this is a very simple example of how you need to be aware of pitfalls data use pitfalls if you had used integer long integer even to store the result technically you had been you would have been doing everything right but your results would still be sometimes unusable incorrect results right so that is uh, 
why it is important to understand the context and uh, what type of data identifiers might be required for the purpose at hand. So let us uh, just look at this code line by line, go through this code. So input output stream include uh, basic functionalities of input output and then using namespace standard and here I define the function prototype. Factorial int is equal to 0 that is default value is 0 and it returns the value of long integer. Default value of the argument is uh, 0 and then we define main function integer i initialized to 0 then we define another global uh, x as a function of float type identifier which is defined somewhere else in some other file that is not defined in this file. So integer for computing factorial you take input and check for sanity of data if the input is negative just abort with the message error message factorial of a negative number is not defined otherwise you define global x as i multiplied by i just some value then factorial i is equal to factorial i and then square of i equal to square of global x. So that's it's a trivial statement just to indicate the use of extern identifier, uh, extern keyword while using the uh, identifier which has been defined in some other file. So in this particular code, I am still defining this as a long type variable, long type identifier return type, but to be safe, you can possibly think of returning a float type identifier, float type return or even double type return just to accommodate large range. <coughs> and then you just, uh, these are some of the tricks to get away with the extra new line characters and return control. Now we come to the definition of the factorial function. So long is the return type factorial int x. So when I define the function definition, I need not define the default values. Default value is specified in the declaration. And if the declaration is not there, then of course I can uh, use the default value here as well. And then static int fact is equal to 1. So this identifier fact declared to be integer type and it is initialized to 1 and it has been declared. It is declared to be of static type so that this remains alive across the function calls. So even after the control is returned after first call of to factorial fact identifier remains alive. So what happens if mm -hmm. x is greater than 1 fact is replaced by x multiplied by factorial x minus 1. That's standard definition of factorial and then you return fact. Right. So every time you return, it remembers what was the previous value that was stored in that and it will keep on computing until it encounters the base condition that is uh, x equal to 1 where it could return whatever was the actual value of fact that was there. No further multiplication with recursive call to factorial. 
so <clears throat> that is what the basic idea of uh, these keywords function recursion as well as the extern keyword was uh, meant to be and then as i as i had mentioned earlier we can have function overloading wherein the functions the same function name can be used to perform different operations depending on the return type and depending on the type of arguments for example add function if it takes two integer return types it has one de one definition if it has two double integer type double type uh, arguments then it will have its own different definition and so on but the function would still be called add right it is possible to call both the both of them the compiler would choose appropriate definition which needs to be used depending on what are the type of arguments with which it is being called and what is the return type with which is being expected so several function definitions with the same name can coexist as long as those have different sets of parameters and standard maths library it actually provides different versions of the functions with different values different types of uh, arguments for example trigonometric functions sin cosine tangent arguments can be either single precision value or it can be double precision value or it can be extended precision value right so the function name remains the same but its definition keeps on is uh, defined accordingly with the appropriate identifier so different versions and the actual function call that is made will be judged based on the matching with the parameters parameters with which the function is being called so just as a, a simple example of uh, that add function so we have one version defining integer identifiers integer arguments and another version defining float arguments doesn't do much it addition is addition it will just add the operands but the fact is you can the purpose of this uh, example is to emphasize the point that you can have multiple avatars of the same function which take different arguments the compiler would invoke appropriate function definition depending on matching with the arguments which we, with which the function is being called right so these are the two inline uh, versions of the add functions and integer version float version and then this is the driving code which calls them so integer version as well as the uh, float version so rather trivial but just to demonstrate the basic idea of function overloading so this actually makes again the whole idea is to make it transparent addition is addition to the user a normal user would expect same function to be used for at purpose of addition irrespective of whether it is uh, referring to uh, whether it is for adding integers or whether it is adding for float right so we leave that complication of uh, choosing appropriate definition of the function to the compiler as long as we are consistent with our definition of the identifiers and the definition of the function with correct type of identifiers uh, the issue is taken care of by the compiler i'll stop here arrays are 
probably the most important concept that we will discuss so i would like to begin that on a fresh start arrays are the oldest data structures there are newer types of data structures various types of data structures that are now available and uh, that make use of uh, another very powerful concept uh, called pointers so pointers we will discuss after we are done with arrays but arrays would you will realize uh, you will appreciate that they make the task of programming very very simple because they allow you a large amount of data in a logical way you don't have to see different locations with different names right? we can have large amount of common uh, similar kind of data have a common name and then we can access individual elements very logical in a very very logical way right and that is what makes arrays a very powerful data structure and the oldest data structure that was uh, developed that was used in programming languages in all languages all programming languages they i mean uh, you cannot actually write any meaningful program without ever using arrays it is so fundamental the concept so we'll discuss more about arrays in our next lecture okay so let us stop here